Welcome to Old Stuff Show. Today we are looking at two uh, somewhat unusual collectibles. Um, my friend here, the old fisherman, may give you uh, a clue as to what they are. Uh, this needlepoint is a beautiful depiction of the uh, fisherman smoking a pipe. And uh, that's where we're heading, to Tabacchiana or tobacco collectibles. Uh, that includes uh, cigarettes, cigars, pipes, and um, uh, and beer uh, as well. We're, uh, we'll look at some of the uh, items that uh, relate to that. Uh, let's start out with tobacco. And uh, you may remember not that far back when smoking was considered to be cool. Uh, you just had to turn the TV on and uh, live programming. Uh, there would be people smoking. Uh, for example, Johnny Carson show. Uh, he was always smoking, and uh, there was an ashtray on his desk. His, de his guests also uh, often smoked. And um, I remember one time uh, he had uh, Dean Martin and George Goble, the comedian, on, and George was sitting closest to Johnny. They both had glasses of something on, in their hand, and uh, while George was busy talking to, to Johnny, uh, Dean uh, had his uh, cigarette and uh, flicked his ashes into uh, George's cup, and of course that got a big laugh in the crowd. So. If it was uh, on TV, TV programs, or in the movies, uh, smoking just seemed to be standard practice. And you would see this reflected in advertising, but there, uh, there seemed to be a, a concern in terms of the advertising that they would address. Now this one is uh, from a um, uh, Lenny Ross uh, a singer. And uh, he's saying, no one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Uh, so, if it's good enough for a, uh, a uh, opera singer, then uh, it would be good enough for you, obviously, uh, that, so they say. So this is a, a 1950 um, popular mechanics magazine that's mentioning that. So obviously there was a little bit of a concern uh, related to that as well. Um, and then if you look at this Look magazine, um, this is uh, Arthur Godfrey, a well-known TV personality saying that there's no scientific evidence to uh, to uh, look at uh, cigarettes as uh, uh, bad for your health, and uh, they're talking here about uh, a um, report that was put out by doctors that said uh, no adverse effects on the nose, throat, and sinuses of a group they studied, and uh, so they're using doctors. Uh, they're mentioning much milder. Uh, type of cigarette and they're trying to uh, justify that smoking was uh, was was quite okay uh, also uh, there's a, a well-known uh, ad on the, in a paper that says and there's a whole whole variety of these I've just uh, taken copies and samples of it where uh, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette and uh, hard to believe but uh, there again, they're using doctors, they're using uh, singers, they're using uh, athletes, movie stars. They're all pushing the same message. It's a very significant kind of approach to advertising. Um, also, I, I checked out eBay and I looked at a few things. And when you look at Camel cigarettes, I noticed that there was a box, an empty box that was selling. And uh, this was selling for $15.50. Uh, so just a, an empty box from the 1950s or 60s uh, would command a little bit of a, of a price. Uh, this is a, an actual Viceroy cigarette package from early, before 1969. And it, it also is on eBay and it uh, has a price on it of uh, $75. So some of these old cigarette related items uh, command a pretty good price. And I also remember, speaking of these packs, when young guys uh, thought it was cool to have the, uh, the cigarette pack up their, up their sleeve and uh, on a, with a tight t-shirt on and uh, walk around with that and maybe a cigarette in their, on their ear. And uh, that was uh, the cool, cool guy walking around to uh, show that he, he was a smoker and uh, he uh, enjoyed it himself. Also uh, cool was uh, related to, uh, oh, in the 1920s, the flappers. They had uh, very long cigarette holders, 
And um, I saw this also on eBay, and it just showed you that the flappers in the 20s were uh, daring at that time, daring to smoke, daring to drink. And that's when uh, women were uh, coming out of uh, their uh, conservatism and the flappers uh, led the way. Now, all of this changed uh, when the Surgeon General warning started to appear, uh, appear on uh, packages and in ads. And this happened in 1969. So I know there's not a uh, Surgeon General's warning on this Viceroy pack, so it has to be pre-1969. That's how you would tell in terms of, uh, of age. Now, some of the related items that uh, are collected with respect to uh, cigar cigarettes and pipes um, and cigars would be the ashtrays. And they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and uh, some uh, had advertising on them. And this one, for example, is a small one and it's uh, advertising a uh, place in Michigan. And uh, this one is a small one advertising Niagara Falls. Uh, they were often used to, uh, as souvenirs to uh, bring home to show that you had been somewhere significant. The amber colored ones are also quite collectible. And um, this, this larger one here would have been probably in a home for use of uh, cigars. Uh, and they also had the tall stands with the ashtrays. Some of those are very collectible, uh, ones that light up. And uh, I've seen them with airplanes on them and uh, big, big ashtrays like that. So it was a very significant, uh, it is still a collectible in terms of uh, people looking for different kinds of ashtrays. Uh, also the tobacco cans, uh, these would uh, contain the tobacco that could be rolled or whatever and it's, uh, this one's export. This one's uh, Mark, Mark 10. Uh, these are collectible, especially the ones that are no longer being made and in good shape. They're, uh, they're worth maybe $10 or so each. So that's one type of uh, cigarette uh, container that is, uh, was sold with cigarettes in them or tobacco. And this one is actually a cigarette flat 50 container. It's export and inside would be 50 cigarettes that would be sold in that metal container. Uh, likewise, uh, Sweet Cap, Sweet Caporal would be the same. And uh, as I said, uh, brands that no longer exist would be the most collectible. And then there's also uh, special edition 50, flat 50s. This one is quite interesting. It's a uh, coronation of Queen Elizabeth. And uh, you could buy that with the cigarettes in that and it would be 1953, very uh, unique kind of collectible. This one's in mint condition, so it's been uh, maintained very carefully over the years. Also, um, uh, lighters, you know, everybody needed a, a lighter. This would be a table model that uh, I've seen them bigger than this, uh, but then there was the, uh, I don't have one at the moment, but the flat ones, and they were are collected today, especially for the advertising on them. Some of them were the cigarette companies or otherwise. And then match covers. Match, match covers today are very collectible, especially if they're um, from a gas station like this one is Sunoco or, uh, or a restaurant like uh, this one. Um, I've met people who have thousands of these things and uh, they come in often in big boxes like this. I've got all kinds of uh, restaurants and uh, gas stations and uh, special situation um, match covers and uh, more collectible uh, with um, uh, uh, with matches in them. So a full, full pack would be worth a little more than an empty one. Now to uh, do uh, something a little cheaper in terms of uh, if you rolled your own, you often would use this uh, paper, it's a Vogue paper, and uh, inside are uh, the papers that you'd pull out and you could ro ro roll your own from maybe some tobacco that was in one of these tins. So that's, that's quite collectible as well. Uh, some of the interesting uh, collectibles 
related to cigarettes. I think I've shown you this one time before on um, the uh, flea market collectible finds. Um, this is a, a box that if you, it's full of cigarettes, let's say, and then you push the thing back and uh, the cigarette comes out and you can take it and use it for your smoke. And it was kept in a prominent place. This one's quite fancy and uh, would be, this one's $20, uh, would be a nice thing to have in the house at the time. A little more specialized collectible uh, related to tobacco would be things like this. The stamp collectors especially would be looking for excise tax stamps and different denominations. Um, again, it's something that people look for in a, in a more specialized way. Uh, so there's just a uh, wide variety of cigarette related uh, collectibles that uh, people look for. And I said one time before, uh, I, over the years I've met, I've, I think I've seen it all in terms of what people collect. And it's, uh, it's amazing the, the variety of things that people uh, look for. And what I'm showing here today is really just the tip of the iceberg. If we move along to cigars, um, cigars were uh, very popular, uh, not so much today, but very popular in the old days. Um, and what's being collected there? Well, the cigar box itself is a um, sought after thing, especially if it's in from your own local area. In my area, uh, in the 1920s, there were uh, 27 factories, cigar making factories, and that was in a city maybe of only 60,000 at that time. So you can see that uh, certainly cigars were very popular and they were, um, I think of my city in, in Montreal were the uh, two largest tobacco or uh, cigar making uh, companies in, uh, in Canada. Uh, inside the cigar box would be an insert, something like that one there, the Sir Haig one. Um, and they were often very colorful, very ornate. Uh, this one on eBay is selling for $18, so it does, it does command a little bit of uh, value. And each cigar had a band wrapped around it. And those bands by themselves are, are quite collectible. So it would look something like that. This again is an eBay item and it's uh, at uh, $2. So not quite as collectible. And yet this one here is a whole collection of uh, bands being sold. And this one is at uh, $18.95 at the moment. So, uh, Cigar, cigars uh, seem to be uh, significant. I know in the 1920s, I've seen ads that said uh, something related to a good five cent cigar. And that was the popular cigar, cigar at that time. Uh, so uh, we go on to pipes now. Uh, pipes aren't used that much today. There's the, the odd person that uh, likes to have uh, tobacco in their pipe. Um, some young folks are uh, buying pipes for a different kind of smoke but uh, they do sell. Um, the uh, Briar pipe is one that uh, was a popular brand, but um, you know, you'd say, well, why would someone want to buy a used pipe? Well, they, they're well, well made. This one is really, really very well made. They can be cleaned. They can be cleaned out. These old uh, pipe cleaners, the old pal pipe cleaners, they're uh, the thing that was used in the old days to, uh, to clean out the pipes. Uh, with this and uh, so that's kind of a collectible in itself and then there's uh, the racks that will hold the pipes racks like that just to display the pipes I've seen them in all kinds of shapes and sizes and uh, even little pin backs this one is, I don't know exactly what it says but it talks about uh, pipe tobacco it's uh, it would be part of a, a pipe collector's uh, collection Pipes, cigarettes, both variety of collectibles. Uh, people are out there looking for it all the time and um, they seem to, uh, to enjoy uh, the hunt as much as anything. And I know I was in uh, the basement of a man who was, uh, he would buy every, every uh, lighter that I could get. And uh, he must have had about, uh, I think he had about 8,000 lighters and they were all categorized on his wall in his basement. And um, 
he he was even so popular that uh, he was uh, they, they some um, museum wanted to uh, use his collection for a display and uh, so some people really really put their mind to it and they uh, they uh, get as much as they can. Well, uh, turning now to uh, beer collectibles, the obvious uh, thing in the beer breweriana. Uh, field would be the beer bottles. So a bottle like this would be about $18 uh, for sale. That uh, Labatt's uh, crystal. And again, it's the bottles that are in good shape, have their labels, and are no longer uh, being made. Uh, this one is very popular. This is O'Keefe uh, Old Vienna. And uh, Carling's Black Label. And another for another kind of Carling's Black Label. So, the thing about these then, these are in really great shape. And like I said, they uh, they run around eighteen dollars. The fun thing about uh, looking at uh, beer and the history of uh, of beer uh, in the past, I found this uh, ad. It's a John the Bad ad. It's actually in my uh, one of my books. And. Uh, this uh, was put out in the early 1900s, and I just have a quote here that I'll read to you. It says here that when the stomach is weak or deficient in digestive power, where through illness the appetite is poor, where skin is pale and there is a deficiency in red blood, physicians find pale ale and stout of the greatest benefit, often better than any medicine. So uh, beer was even being pushed in those days as, uh, as, uh, as medicine. Uh, besides bottles, uh, beer openers, uh, this, uh, this is a pretty good one here, Molson one, and uh, this type of thing. These are collectible and uh, you find all kinds of them out there, usually in a big box, just uh, rooting through and see if you can find one that you don't have. Uh, as well as beer bottles, beer caps, so the caps that go with the bottles. Uh, they're very collectible. That's an old Vienna one. And uh, this one is the, uh, the uh, crystal one, the crystal lugger. And if they can be in good shape, that one's not the greatest, but it's still a hard one to replace. And the O'Keefe one. So they would have fit originally those, those bottles. Um, also, smaller items like uh, the uh, Budweiser coaster. Uh, coasters were given out in all the bars, so these are you know, pretty easy to find, and the old ones are out there uh, as well. Oddities, I think, uh, in terms of beer, uh, the ad, certainly. Um, trays, beer trays, uh, they're hard to find in good shape, and uh, people are out there looking for beer trays all the time. Also uh, mugs, um, steins, uh, so things like that uh, that uh, relate to beer are, are quite collectible. Again, I met a guy who uh, worked at uh, Labatt's for most of his life and he had a basement full of stuff and uh, he was interested in selling it. But the problem is in buying a large collection like that, there's only so many people that collect it, so to sell it, you have a very limited number of people who are willing to uh, look at it and they may not want all of it. So instead of putting your money all in one basket, I, uh, myself, I tend to spread things out and have a few samples of each, but that's from the, uh, the seller's point of view. So this is, there's a whole world out here that um, is something that you may not have been familiar with. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's there and uh, people are having fun finding it and uh, you know, again, I've said many times, if you're interested in starting a collectible yourself, uh, these these have potential and uh, they're not too rare and uh, yet they're not uh, overwhelming. So uh, when you find it, it's, uh, it's a new discovery. Uh, in the As I said in the past, uh, many of these things will show up on my eBay site. Uh, we've added at the end of our video uh, instructions to um, get to the eBay site. Uh, some people uh, are not totally familiar with that, so uh, 
um, have a look at that and uh, take a look at some of the stuff that I have. I should also point out that um, the um, flea market uh, that I am at has just opened up uh, and uh, it's safe. The people are uh, required to wear masks there at this point. Um, and it's in Aberfoyle, which is along the Highway 401 up uh, to 6 South. And uh, you take the 6 South exit and uh, go north about uh, a little over a mile. And uh, it's a very large um, flea market. So if you happen to get there, uh, say hello and mention that you uh, did uh, see me. And uh, I'm in booths 38, 39, and 40. Uh, so I uh, hope to see you uh, there sometime uh, this summer. Also, thank you very much for uh, subscribing, and uh, that's greatly appreciated. Uh, with respect to uh, uh, this bottle here, cheers. Uh, in Germany, Prost. In uh, Holland, Proust. In uh, Spanish, Salut. Uh, and in Sweden, Skoll. So all of those things to you. And uh, thank you very much for watching today, and uh, we'll see you next time.